Ready to Burst, 1968 novel Spiral by Franck Etienne. More effective at setting each twig a quiver, the passing of waves, than a pebble dropped into a pool of water. Spiralism defines life at the level of relations, colors, odors, sounds, signs, words, and of historical connections, positionings in time and space. Not in a closed circuit, but tracing the path of a spiral, so rich that each new curve, wider and higher than the one before, expands the arc of one's vision. In perfect harmony with the whirlwind of the cosmos, the world of speed in which we evolve from the greatest of human adventures to struggles for liberation, spiralism aligns perfectly in breadth, depth, with an atmosphere of explosive vertigo. It follows the movement that is the very heart of all living things. It is a shattering of space, an exploding of time. Recreating holes from mere details and secondary materials, the practice of spiralism reconciles art and life through literature. And it necessarily breaks with the hypocrisy of the word, recognition, totality. Every day, I employ the dialect of untamed hurricanes. I speak the madness of opposing winds. Every evening, I use the patois of furious rains. I speak the rage of overflowing waters. Every night, I speak to the islands of the Caribbean in the language of hysterical storms. I speak the madness of the sea in heat. Dialect of hurricanes, patois of rains, language of storms, unfolding of life in a spiral. In its essence, life is tension towards something, towards someone, toward oneself, toward the point of maturation where the ancient and the new unravel, death and birth. And every being finds itself in part in pursuit of its double, a pursuit that might even seem to bear the intensity of need, of desire, of infinite quest. Dogs pass by. I've always been obsessed with stray dogs. They yap at the silhouette of the woman I've been chasing, at the image of the man I've been seeking out, at my double, at the murmurings of fleeting voices. For so many years now, it feels like 30 centuries. The woman is left without fanfare, left my heart out of time. The man never held out his hand to me. My double is always just a step ahead of me. And the unhinged throats of nocturnal dogs let loose terrifying howls, making the sound of a broken accordion. It is then that I become a tempest of words, bursting open the hypocrisy of clouds and the deceitfulness of silence, rivers, storms, flashes of lightning, mountains, trees, lights, rains, untamed oceans. Take me away in the frenzied marrow of your joints. Take me away. It would take just a hint of clarity for me to be born with nine lives, for me to accept life, tension, the inexorable law of maturation, osmosis and symbiosis. Take me away. It would take just the sound of a footstep, a glance, a tender voice for me to live happily in the hope that man is capable of awakening. Take me away, for it would take so little for me to speak of the sap that circulates in the marrow of cosmic joints. Dialect of hurricanes, patois of rains, language of storms. I speak the unfolding of life in a spiral. A higher philosophy of the blade that slices. I entrust my wounded heart to the knowing surgery of the spiders of time. Hands of the clock glide along the cosmos of forgetting, empirical psychiatry. Nocturnal winds brutally read out the sentences of the trees so sick in their solitude. Anarchic reading, nothing but a flood of words for so few actions. The river's source only recounts its subterranean adventures to the discretion of stones. Time thickens into the obscurity of absence under the pricklings of impatience, the itchiness of the soul consumed by desperation. I'm still waiting for someone who never came back or who came back different than I'd imagined. Still, I bless the flight of imaginary fires. I wash myself in my tears. I quarantine my sorrow. And then I attempt to laugh from the margins of myself. False liberty, the glass, defeats the revolt of fish in their aquarium. I, for my part, am outraged by the neutral memory of frivolous mirrors and by the blindness of glass walls. 
I proclaim the power of my eyes over lakes, over the sea, and over all regions peopled by talkative mirrors. We have lived for so long in a space of darkness that we no longer know the difference between dream and reality, between blindness and sleep. Our eyelids are sewn shut with invisible thread, offspring with eyeless faces, neither desiring nor capable of anything. What are we actually worth? We need the light to come, like a brutal army of lancets. Sound the alarm, ring the bells, beat the drums. The storm shows me the depth of the heart, the complexity of life. Presumptuously, I long took myself for a living God, beautiful, terrific. I believed myself to be an irresistible force, virile stream, fertile source of light, powerful wind, stormy wave churning up the sea, tossing ships about, leaving wrecks and bodies in my wake. I saw myself as a dense forest, a mountain range, a chain of storms, an earthquake nourishing the veins of the planet with my blood, avalanche of shattered flint, burning flame, devouring mouth, cutting flash of lightning, clustering of clouds engorged with rain, irresistible flood. For a long time, arrogantly, I believed I was a magnificent God with the power to single-handedly master the whole of existence, horrifying solitude. You could even say that I was living nothing more than the weakness and vulnerability of a mere mortal isolated in his failure. Thus did I learn humility, so as to avoid humiliation. I began, painfully, to become a man among men. I suffered, I'm still suffering, but I accept the minuscule existence of drops of water and specks of dust if they contribute to the growth of the tree. And today, more than ever before, Recognizing that I am no more than a fragile blade of grass, I shiver like a moonflower, hearing the whisper of a nocturnal voice. Leave your lamp lit well in advance of the eclipse of the dying star. The lamp's flame flickers. What treacherous love does it still offer to amnesic butterflies? Tongue of flame, the, the wick lights a message much older than the lamp. Let strip bare the symbol of the light and from its flesh flows the blood of living things. The flesh is the burning place of all speech. Outside it, there's nothing but noise and cold winds, words that lead nowhere, that inspire neither running nor walking, amount to no more than a leprotic tongue in a useless mouth. Just as poetry is neither scribbling on paper nor a drug in the night, it's the shortest path of distraction from the light, the steepest of sloping lines. Eyes dilated, nostrils flare, ears cocked, pools of light, odors, sounds. Why, who, then? could possibly speak of incommunicability faced with the persistence of windows opened on to infinity. Depending on the situation, we'll have to use pity or rigor, sympathy or loathing. It's a question of sanctioning the journeyman's guild of rumor and silence, the flames of paradox. Thus will no weapon, no force pull free the cement that binds hands linked in such love. Rain on spindly fingers, chatty seamstress. The agitated sea deploys its, its rows of foam-headed horses on the crests of the waves. The clouds unfurl in a blast of blood. There's where our alliance truly begins, possessed by all the gods and the Loire. I want infinite space for my insane gestures on the scale of my mad horse's blood. Water only knows how to slither along the belly of the earth. Nourishment and blood of warriors, it stands tall in the trunks of trees. Soldiers off to war in the mists of time. Heroes disappeared while drilling in the inexhaustible mines of milky auroras. Brave women, dead for love or bread for your children. Kaonabo, Anakaona, Bukman, Desalim, Charlemagne Peralt. When will the starfruit tree return? Your descendants march in the streets of Beau Prince. Mexico, Havana, Dakar, Johannesburg, Chicago, Los Angeles, Boston, Miami, New York, Montreal, Paris. Come back to see your Vietnamese children hold out bloody palms while being bombed with Nepal. 
Enslaved people destroy the screen that blocks your view and you'll understand better. Rebellious people, may the word be free and swollen with light. May the mouth keep resisting the muzzle. You'll be able to give your understanding, but don't take off your shields. Don't accept any form of servitude. Don't sell your soul any longer. Propose and dispose at the same time. If need be, rest yourselves, but never put down your weapons. Break the chains, tear down the barriers, unfasten the muzzles. Now, raise your vertical voices high above the flatness of the day.